look, it's the double wide dudes. All right, all right. Thanks for tuning back into the latest episode of Double White Dudes. We're going to go ahead and jump into a new series, and we're going to talk about the whole home buying process, uh, basically from start to finish. Say you're a family deciding to get into a mobile home. Uh, we'll show you steps one and all the way to the finish line. Um, but on a side note, we've, we've really had a wild week, haven't we, AP? Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to sometimes remember that we're only four and a half months into this brand new company. But, um, man, the momentum's just crazy. We've we got over 2,100 followers on Facebook, mm -hmm. over 600 downloads on our podcast. Um, we just closed on customer 9 and 10. Big thanks to the uh, Galindo and uh, Gentleman family mm -hmm. for uh, giving us the opportunity to earn their business this weekend. But uh, things are really starting to pick up, Mousetrap. Yeah, the, the momentum really is picking up, man. The, I like the vibe at the office. Uh, we're about to get into the new sales lot here in a few weeks. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a game changer. Yeah. Yeah, it's just awesome when you can um, create a business, create a company where everyone wins. Mm -hmm. You know, our vendors win. They're, they're a big help of making all this happen. Our customers win. And, um, you know, when, when we help folks change their lives, then, then we get to put food on our table as well. Yeah, 100%. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's real important to know what you're doing when you, when you decide to make the jump to get into a mobile home. You know, often I, I have customers call in and, you know, they want information of the home and, and they think the process is easy, you know, and our job is to make it easy. It's, you know, it's what we do. Um, but there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, there's to, a lot that goes into it. Yeah, to finally getting your keys and, and moving into your home. Um, and the first is going to be basically knowing where we're going to put the home. Right. All right. Some of the things that you have to consider is, you know, the commute to work, uh, school districts if you have kiddos, um, you know, distance from family or relatives and friends or really just the overall lifestyle that you live, you're going to have to um, pinpoint an area that you would like to live. Right, right. And I, th I think one of the biggest questions folks need to ask themselves if they're looking for the manufactured home route is country living right for you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially if you're looking to build on private land here in the city of San Antonio and in the major metro areas in and around Texas, the parcels of land that are zoned for manufactured home construction are going to be at least 20 to 30 minutes away from the downtown area. And um, there's a lot of pros that come with that. You know, some folks enjoy the hustle and bustle of city life. Mm -hmm. um, most of the folks that decide to go the mobile manufactured home route um, want a quieter, simpler lifestyle. Um, but that's, that's probably one of the first decisions you've got to make um, go, going down this home buying process. Is country living right for you or would you, would you prefer to be closer to the city? Yeah. Yeah, when you make that decision to get out of the current situation that you're in and get into a mobile home, um, you don't necessarily have to live in the middle of nowhere, right? You know, you have the greater area of San Antonio and all the surrounding cities. Um, you know, you have Floresville, Lavernia, Poteet, uh, Pleasanton. Um, you know, Ernest lives over in Castroville, um, New Braunfels, Seguin. Really, anywhere that's going to be zoned out to allow mobile home is going to be a short commute away from what you're normally used to. Yeah, you know, a few, few extra minutes. Yeah. But that that's an important thing to consider. Are you willing to drive a few extra minutes to, to own your own piece of Texas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the first challenges is is finding a piece of land. Um, how would customers go about that, AP? Well, there's a number of resources online where you can shop for land, just, just like we allow you to shop for homes on our website. Um, right off the bat, landsoftexas.com, getsomeland.com. Land Watch, and of course you've got Trulia and Zillow where mm -hmm. you can narrow down your search to just look for parcels of land. Um, and of course you've got your local real estate agents once you get a little more serious and, and want to physically look and walk around your own piece of land. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they can jump on the website, type in a zip code, um, an area that's close to them or, or an area they think they'll, they'll like to live, and it'll basically populate some options for them. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah, some of the things that I... Uh, tell my customers to do is, is really just do some small filters. Um, you, know, you can filter by smallest to biggest or uh, least expensive and most expensive. Yeah, and, and that'll give you a good idea of the comps and, and the average price of what land is going for in that area. Right. 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 And if anything, it just 
allows them to kind of put a budget together like mm-hmm. we talked about in the last episode. But um, we, we also offer a free land locator surface for our customers if that's something they want a little more hands-on help with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, those are some good sources to get your feet wet. And, of course, uh, every piece of land in Texas is different. In the coast, you have to think about floodplains as well as uh, possible wind zone 2 area. If you're closer to the hill country, uh, it's a bit more rocky and, and improvements and site work may be a bit different. Um, but, AP, what, what would you say the most important thing to consider when someone's looking for a piece of property? Well, the biggest thing to look for right out the gate is uh, the zoning restrictions in a given area. Okay. Um, if you're looking at a piece of property and it's got a great price, great location, um, but you're not allowed to build a manufactured home out there, um, then it really doesn't do you any good. And it's really important to do this research up front. You know, just last week, Mousetrap, we got a call from a lady who had uh, bought a home cash Mm -hmm. um, from another dealer up the road. And unfortunately, neither her or the company that was selling her the home did this research. And um, it actually wasn't until after she got her home delivered and had already paid for it that she found out she she wasn't allowed to put a manufactured home on that property. And um, those kind of mistakes get very expensive in, in this industry, Mousetrap. So... It's important to check with zoning, not just with the city or the county, um, but also with the HOA if you happen to have one in that area to see if your home is allowed to be put there, see if there's any size restrictions, see if there's any siding requirements, age requirements, any anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, I know that may sound a, a bit difficult. You know, when I explain that to customers, um, they have a bit of hesitation that, that they want to do that, but it really is just a simple call to the county office. Right. to your city, right? Finding out if this zip code or this address can have a new manufactured home put on there. You know, sometimes I run into uh, people that have mobile homes in and around the area, um, but when it comes to getting a new home built after a certain year, um, you have to go site built because, you know, they cut out the manufacturing part of it. Right, right. Z- zoning changes all the time, and um, this isn't something you want to make assumptions on. Mm-hmm. Um, but but like you said, it doesn't have to be complicated, Mousetrap. A simple call to the county or city development office, and they'll give you the answers over the phone. Yeah. Yeah, it really is a simple phone call away. Um, they'll be glad to help you out and, and let you know, you know, if you're able to move in that direction. Um, other than zoning, AP, what's, what's going to be another important thing that uh, they're going to have to look out for when they find a piece of property? Well, after zoning, I I would say the second most important part when looking at a piece of property or when deciding to build a manufactured home on a piece of property you already own is, is that land improved? And what I mean by improved is, does it have the utilities, the water, the sewer, the electric already in place, or is that something you're going to need to have done out there and account for in your budget? Okay. So water, septic, electric, everything that's going to have the house running, um, you know, you're going to have to make sure that's lined up. Right. Right. And, and I know sometimes when people buy property and there's an old home on there and they got a demo of the home, um, the septic was put in several years back, 60s, 70s, uh, possibly even before that. But sometimes the septic isn't up to par. Right. Right. Or, or maybe there was a smaller home there and, and you're upgrading. You have to make sure that the septic is usable for the amount of people that you're going to have living in the home. Right. Right. And it's not just the septic. You know, I was thinking Lamar just this past Sunday, we were, we were visiting with them. And, of course, we did a site inspection prior to them coming to close on their home. Um, but they had electric there mm-hmm. that's running their home right now. Um, but these newer homes are run on 200 amp service. And, mm-hmm. and a lot of the older homes a few years back were, were run on 100 amp. Um, so just like with the zoning, you don't want to make any assumptions when it comes to the improvements on your property. It's really important that you have a professional, an expert go out there and do a site inspection um, so you know all the details and all the ins and outs of what you're fixing to get into with your home purchase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. the site inspection is going to be really crucial. And just like AP was saying, you can't be making any assumptions. You have to look out for the septic tank, the size of the meter loop, right? And let's say you're working with a realtor AP and and they tell you this land is improved. Do they stop there? Are they going to take their word for it? Well, Mousetrap, just because a piece of land is improved doesn't mean there aren't going to be any additional expenses to get it ready for when your home comes in. Um, I think back to Leroy, you know, he was on the podcast with us um, a few weeks back. He bought a piece of property that was improved. 
And, and what that meant was there was electric service at the street. There was water service at the street. But after that, he had to pay a considerable amount of money to get what's called a water tap, mm-hmm. tap into the city um, lines there. Um, we had to bring in a power pole and bring in what's called a meter loop so that we could tie into the home there, the electric service there. And all that costs money. So you really want to make sure you're accounting for that um, when you're shopping for that piece of land and, and when you're putting together your overall home building budget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, those those are going to be the two main factors, um, having it improved and uh, the zoning. You know, the 95% of uh, customers that I talk to in, in when we're talking about getting a new piece of property, that's the go-to information that you need to get right off the back. Um, but for the other 5%, some of the small things that you also have to watch out for, as I touched on earlier, is floodplains. What do they have to look out for when uh, they're possibly in, in an area that floods, AP? Well, when, when you're looking at land, um, sometimes you're going to find land that, that's a lot less expensive than the land around it. And uh, generally, there's a good reason for that. One, one of the biggest reasons why land may be on the market for a lower price than, than the other piece of property around it is because that property is in a floodplain. And uh, that definitely doesn't mean you can't build a home on there. It just means there's going to be some additional cost to build up the foundation or, or build up the, uh, the home set to get it out of that floodplain. And uh, FEMA has a really cool tool on their website um, at FEMA.gov where you can actually input the address and see if that piece of property is in a floodplain. Okay. Say they find that piece of property and it's an area where they want. Um, if it's in a floodplain, what, what are the steps they have to do that way they're set up for success? Well, the only way to really know what all has to be done to that property to make sure you, your family, and your investment is protected is to get what's called an elevation certificate. And uh, basically what that is, a, a local survey company will come out there and you know, they generally run anywhere between 400 to to $1,000. And um, they shoot elevations and shoot grades on your property. And um, they basically print up a report that tells us as the builder how high we have to build up your foundation and how high we have to set your home to make sure the next time you get a good rain, your brand new home is not going to wash away. Okay. So the elevation certificate should um, take care of the flood area. And you can go to uh, FEMA.gov to see if the property that you're interested in is, is going to need that. Um, so to kind of sum it up, AP, when you're making the jump or, and you finally decide to get out of your current situation and, and start living in a mobile home, um, you're going to have to look for zoning on the new piece of property. Right? You're going to have to look for improvements, what all uh, the land has and, and what all needs to go in it. And a simple site survey will be able to take care of that. Right? Right. Uh, and then also the floodplains. If the land that you're looking for is an area with floods, um, an elevation certificate is going to be the route to take care of that. And on a side note, that reminds me of the wind zone requirements uh, down by the coast. The state does require a wind zone 2 on your tie down. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not an option. If you're in a wind zone 2 county, which is basically any county that touches the coast, mm-hmm. um, the state actually requires that not only that your home be tied down to wind zone 2 requirements, um, but also that it's built at the factory to wind zone two construction standards. So again, not a big deal, definitely something that um, we can take care of. Um, but the biggest takeaway I hope our audience gets today, Mousetrap, is um, you really got to surround yourself with a team of professionals that um, can make sure you're setting you and your family up for success. Mm-hmm. You know, with all the things you mentioned, zoning, improvements, floodplains, wind zone, um, there, there's a lot that goes into deciding whether a piece of property is the right place to build a home for you and your family. And uh, more than anything, we, we just want to make sure folks are setting themselves up for success. Yep. Um, okay, well, that does it for this episode, guys. This is the first one on the home buying process. If land's not going to be the route you want to go to, uh, tune into the next one. We're going to talk about getting into a mobile home park. And we'll give you the ins and outs of uh, choosing the right community if you do decide to go in that direction. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you on the next one.